Chris Avena with American Outdoor News. I'm here with my new really good friend, <laughs> Louis Tuminaro. Fellow Paisan over here. <laughs> From Gunfather Restorations. Louis, it was really great meeting you yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, Chris. Even within five minutes that I was talking to you, I felt like I had, I had a brother standing right next to me. You it's, know what I mean? When it's you can been a go, lot of fun. You know, when you when you have another guy from New York that actually literally comes up right next to you, starts talking, and we're talking about pizza and food yep. and all that fun stuff, I knew this was going to be a great um, interview here. Yeah, we were probably in the same clubs growing up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had a lot more hair back then, so you, I know you probably don't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> me too, brother. <laughs> me so, too. you grew up in Long Island. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Suffolk County, Long Island, you know, um, I was a business owner at a young age, okay, and what I did was is, you know, um, cars was always my thing, loved cars, you know, I was in the automobile industry, okay, and what happened was is I always, though, from my dad, peddled guns, I always bought, sold guns, collected guns, worked on guns, you know, and um, as I had sold a couple of our companies that we owned, I just found myself doing more gun and you know one day I decided I came home and I said to my wife hey you know something I think I want to change I like I think I want to move to Montana and I think I want to buy and sell guns okay. so, so I mean it was huge because you know when you know you know how it is being in New York your whole family is in New York yeah and normally the hard part when you're in New York is saying to your family hey babe how about leaving your family okay yeah. to go move to Montana with me you know, most people want to do that, but they say, oh, I can't because my family's still there. Yep. You know, we did it. We left everybody, and we just went and did it, you know. Um, but it was a great experience. Started working out of my double car garage. And then next thing you know, I um, got a small shop for my first gun shop. Yeah. And um, then I had the bright idea of doing television. Okay, so once we um, hooked up with the outdoor channel, um, I knew that I needed a really nice place to film TV in, so we purchased a building the property that we're in now, and now we have ourselves an absolutely beautiful gun shop. So, at what age did you start shooting? Oh, my my dad had me shooting when I was when I, when I was a child. We were going okay, so we lived on Long Island. We travel about three hours to Columbia County, upstate uh -huh. New York. Yep. Okay, and um, what we would do is we would sh I would start out shooting rabbits, you know, and squirrels, and I hate to say, I hate to say it, twenty I hate to say it twenty two. Everything we seen we shot like when you're a kid, you know what I mean? Like yep. I would shoot birds, squirrels, chipmunks, yep. you know. But uh, I was having a lot of fun doing that while my dad was putting blinds up for the following season sure. or whatever, you know. But um, I just it was something in my blood. And just progressed started when did you get your first handgun from me oh um, well I have a concealed weapons okay but um, when I first got to Montana okay I mean I've shot so many of my dad's handguns okay yeah but but my first um, handgun like permit I, I when I came to Montana I took this little the little couple weekend schooling test yeah. you know what I mean uh -huh. and I got my concealed weapons and yeah. uh, I have I've had it ever since and that was about when I was 42 years old. Wow. So how was the reciprocity bringing your guns from New York to Montana? Was that easy or, because I know some states are like, oh, you got a license? Okay, you know, oh, yeah. renew when, it's, uh, when it uh, expires. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm going to use this as an example. You know, you know, God bless my father, you know, and I mean, he's in heaven right now. You know, but when my father ended up moving from New York to Montana, when my father passed away, it was kind of weird because like I was contacted saying back in New York like oh you know where's all your father's guns yep. you know what I mean and, uh -huh. and it was just kind of it was kind of weird you know that people are keeping track of who's passing away what guns they have and so on you know yep. what I mean but you know we have a um, you know we have a federal firearms license okay so everything that comes in through the shop is comes in through our license yeah so it makes like Every, a hell of a lot easier yeah, than the normal guy like oh, me. Er, everything is above board. And in our business, okay, um, every gun that comes into our building for a restoration, for a build, for whatever it may be, um, comes in with um, an FFL attached to it. Yeah. So, um, what was it like 
coming from New York, the hustle and bustle, you walk down the street, there's a nice restaurant, <laughs> to Montana, in the middle of nowhere, where you find there's a great Italian restaurant, and it's like egg noodles and ketchup. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so we get, you know, like, coming to Montana was like real cultural, you know, culture shock, you know? I mean, it was a, it was a lot slower, okay? Um, you couldn't go out and get food at any time of the evening, you know, yep. when we wanted to. You know, Chinese food wasn't real Chinese people cooking Chinese food in Montana, you know, at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, there were, there aren't any pasta places in my particular town that you can go and get an Italian dinner. Yep. You know, so you got Chinese's out. You know, you had pizzas out. You know, plenty of steakhouses. Don't get me wrong. You know, yeah. because Montana beef is amazing. Yep. Okay, but you know the, but you know like, you know, Chris, you know like me and you like. In being in New York, um, food is part of our culture. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like we look forward to good food. Sure. So, you know, I had to give up certain things to come to Montana, but the pace and the beauty and the way of living, like I was just in New York a few days ago yep. visiting my daughter. My daughter just had a baby, you know? Congratulations. Thank you, man. I had a little baby girl, man. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, man. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, like I, I, was there for, I was there for a day. A day and a half and wow, while I was quick. there I had Chinese okay. I had pizza you know what I mean went to an Italian restaurant you know all you within a day and a half that I was there I got to get it in before I go back home yep you know but uh, I, tr I try to get back to New York a lot you know probably three four times a year I get back is that what you miss most about New York the food yeah <laughs> I have That's to it family. yeah but I have to admit this time going back you know last week going back I have to truly say that I drove to I drove to New York this time. Yeah. It took me three days, three 15-hour days. But as I hit New Jersey, that's just as I was coming into New Jersey and watching just every lane of traffic, I had like this something come over me where I just said, "This this is not my home anymore." Yeah. Okay. Traditionally, it is, uh, but it's not my home anymore. Like I don't want this race. I don't want this, you know, anymore. Yep. If anything, like I am looking as we get older to slow down. Yeah. And you like, you know, like when I when I'm in New York for the day that I was there, I come to a traffic light, okay, and like I'm not sitting here staring at that light with my foot on the brake and my foot on the gas at the same time, which obviously it seems like people are, okay, yeah. because the second the light turns green, they're beeping at I you. I got people beeping at me, and I'm a New Yorker, <laughs> and people are beeping at me. So I yeah. know, I know that I have slowed down a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you relocate to Montana. You finally get your gun shop. What makes you want to start a TV show? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, but I'm the kind of person that I just like, I get, I, I get complacent. I don't want to be complacent. You know what I mean? So everything is going great. I got this beautiful, um, gun shop and a friend of mine did TV out on the island okay so I was familiar with production I was familiar on how he got the TV show yeah. okay so basically when you want to do a TV show okay you got to film a pilot so you got to have a yeah. production company come into your place film something for three to five minutes that's gonna be amazing okay showing characters showing what you do and then you have to pitch that to networks sure. okay so we get, went ahead and did all that Okay, and um, we had called the Outdoor Channel, okay, and the Outdoor Channel was um, really, really liked our pitch, and they yeah. liked our promo that we sent them, and before you know it, in 2014, the Outdoor Channel picked us up, and we started filming with our family. Wow. Now, originally, you, you had your whole family in the shop, the world characters in your show. Yep. How does that affect your everyday life? You're working together, you're living together, you're eating together. You must get on everyone's nerves. <laughs> well, I, I, I seem to get on people's nerves once I mean, in a while. each other's nerves, yeah, not I just know. Well, no, I know. You know, I'm pretty type A, you know, and I'm very particular, you know, but we have a, we have a very, very close-knit family, okay? Um, and, the, you know, and everybody liked being on TV, you yeah. know? So they were okay with it. They really didn't know any better because they were young and they were on TV, you uh -huh. know? You know, but what happened was is, is as my family started growing, you know, this child went this direction, that child went this direction. Went you know, my, my son, though, did decide to come and work in the family business. Okay. So I do, we do have Louie Jr. 
like in our shop as okay. we speak right now, you know, awesome. and he's holding the fort down over there. But, um, you know, and then what happens is, is that after everybody kind of went their own direction, what we did was we reformatted the show yeah. to a show, okay, that we could show more gun in. So now I had a little less family to show, uh -huh. okay, but now we're get, now we're able to show our craft. So is there a particular type of firearm that you prefer more than others, or <laughs> everybody has a favorite? Oh yeah, I have one. What's yours? Uh, you know, my dad's was a Smith & Wesson. My dad was just always a huge Smith & Wesson fan, I, and I am too, okay, but Colt is, Colt is, is, is my gun, you know, like, I'm a huge Colt revolver and 1911 fan. Yeah. Um, and just so happens that Colt is our presenting sponsor on our TV show. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you know, Colt is like our family. When I say family, like I go to Connecticut two, three times a year, and I go to the factory, and I know everybody, and we walk through the custom shop, and we walk through the factory, uh -huh. and I see what they're building, and um, the people over at Colt treat us like family. It's amazing. Yeah. What a, it's a great relationship. And I am a huge fan of the Colt Python. There's a lot to be said about tight relationships with yes. not just friends and sponsors. It, they become family because yes. I have that with my advertisers. Got you. Not all of them, but the ones you just know. You know, Colt, like everybody that, that we partner with for each season that we're on television, they all have my cell number. I have their cell numbers for Christmas. We will text each other, Merry Christmas. Like, so it's not like I'm, I'm trying to, to gather sponsors, okay, just for a one and done thing. Yeah. I'm looking to establish long-term relationships so that we can grow together and offset each other. Sure. You know? Uh-huh. So Absolutely. It's, it, no, it's important to me, you know, that, that, that our sponsors are equally as happy at what we're doing for them as what they're doing for us. Absolutely. It's got to be mutual. Oh, yeah. So what's next for you guys? You know, so we're here at the 2024 SHOT Show right now. And, um, of course, I'm talking to you. Okay, got to go over to Gun Broker this afternoon. Gun Broker, I got to do a little podcast with Gun Broker. Okay. Um, I, have, I was over at the Colt booth doing some signings and visiting over with the people over there. This year, we're just doing, we have a lot of sponsors, like I said, but we are... We're here to thank the sponsors, okay, mm -hmm. for last year, you know sure. what I mean? And of course, get them ready for 2024 and, and yeah. so on. So, uh, you know, we're just here just being really, really, really um, graceful and have a, we have a lot of gratitude for everything that's happening. Hey, we're, we're very lucky to be able to do what we do, doing something we love. You know, we are, and you know something, the Outdoor Channel has been very, very dear to me and my family and, and the gun shop. Um, we've been with the Outdoor Channel since 2014. Our kids have grown up on the Outdoor Channel. We've all learned and we've met so many great people, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. along the way. Oh, it's true. Okay, and everybody is just nice to each other. Everybody is friendly. Like, we're like one big family. Yeah. And all I can say is that I'm very, very happy to be part of the Outdoor Channel family. So, are there any surprises that we should look forward to for this coming season? Oh yeah, let me tell you something. We have we, we have an amazing lineup. We have hundreds and hundreds of people that send their submissions in every year. Okay, hopefully that we're gonna pick and choose them. Okay, to you know to be on an episode of the Gunfather Restorations. Yeah. Okay, but um, we have a phenomenal lineup. And all I can say is that I am really, really happy that the people are still writing in. We're, get, we're getting great responses, and we hope that everybody loves the work that we are doing on everyone's guns. That's great. Well, I look forward to this season. You've got to look forward to uh, a care package of super sod and dry <laughs> sausage, maybe some provolone. Chris, I'm <laughs> Chris, I need it, all right? I'm dependent on it, all right? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Definitely check out Gunfather Restorations on the Outdoor Channel. And we're looking forward to another great year. Thank you, brother. Thanks Always so much. a pleasure with you, man. It is. Fellow Paisan. Absolutely. All right, brother. Thanks.